Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a flash loan with a new truffle box produced by Ave. Let's have a look. So over here on Truffle Suite we've got a page about the truffle box. Now the first thing uh, that it asks you to do is install truffle. If we take a look over here we can see that I already have truffle installed. If I check the version you can see that we're on version 5.1.32. Now if we look over on the instructions here, it actually says that it's been confirmed to be working with that exact version. So that's great. Let's uh, move to the next step, which is to download the box. So let's copy and paste that up here and let that magic happen. So it's unboxing into this folder here. The folder started off as an empty folder, by the way, so it's just downloading that uh, now. Okay, cool. The Download is complete, the box has been uh, unpacked, uh, and as you can see here, unbox successful uh, suite. So let's move on to the next step. So it says here to rename the env file to .env and add a few parameters in there, such as your infura key and your account key for development. So let's open up code and have a look at that file. And as you can see here, it's been uh, created for us as part of the box. We need to rename this to .env, and then we need to replace this with your Infura key. So that means going to Infura, and this is your private key. For Infura key, you need to go to Infura. So if we take a look at uh, Infura here, uh, you need to create a project or use an existing project like this one go to settings and then choose your project ID here and that is the key that you put in right here. Now your, your private key here is the private key of, of, your, of your wallet. So the deployment account key here is the private key that is associated with your Ethereum wallet address and you can get that from your MetaMask uh, account so whatever whatever MetaMask uh, that you're using I'm using Brave so I just go to Brave Wallet like so so you would go into your wallet and you would click on details and then you click on export private key you put your password in here which is your MetaMask password and click confirm and then your your key will appear in this in this box right here and you just simply copy and paste it into that uh, .env file. Okay, let's proceed with the next step. So we need to run npm install next. So let's clear away the screen and run npm install. And that will just install all the dependencies. Out of interest, what are the dependencies? Well, let's have a look. We go to a package file. And you can see here, there's just a few dependencies that we're going to be using in this uh, truffle box. One of them is the open zeppelin contracts. The other is the hardware wallet provider, uh, .env, and Truffle. Uh, now, by the way, one thing I've noticed is that it's a good idea to bump this up to 3.7, in fact, when we use this. So I'm going to do that uh, now. Okay. If I run that again and install again, we should get the latest uh, version of the, of the, of the um, wallet there. Okay, next thing we need to do is connect our Truffle console to um, the network of our choice. And in this case, I'm going to use the Coven network because the contracts that Ave uses for the Flash loan are, there's some deployments on the Coven network that we can use. So that's the network that I'm going to use in this case. Okay, so... I'm going to uh, start up a Truffle console, and I'm going to choose Coven as the network of, the tr of, of choice. By the way, before I do that, I'm just going to show you that I've now got the latest version of the hardware wallet provider. So that's 1037. As mentioned earlier, I think 1036 had some issues with it, so that's why I recommend bumping that up. So let's go and open up Truffle. Uh, console and set the network to Coven 
And while that's firing up, let's just take a look at the Truffle config so you can see there that we are connecting to the Coven network here, uses the hardware wallet provider, it picks up the deployment account key from here and the Infura API key that we set earlier in the .env file. Okay, so the rest of these parameters should be pretty familiar to you guys. If we head back over, we've now got a, a connection to Coven. If we look at the network, you can see here that we, we, that we don't have any contracts deployed, which is the next thing that we, we need to do. So let's head over to the um, instructions and see what the next step is. So the next step is to run the standard migrate reset command in the terminal window to migrate the contracts. Now, before that, I want to make a couple of changes to the way that the contract behaves and the way that the contract is deployed. So let's have a look at the contract quickly first. So this is the flash loan contract. And this, just to give you a quick tour of this flash loan contract, basically it's importing a number of interfaces uh, and it's also importing this flash loan receiver base. And when we create an instance of the flash loan contract, we're passing in the address provider, which is then passed through the receiver base, which we'll take out a look at in a second. Now, if I just skip down to the bottom here, you see there's a method here, a function called flash loan, and it takes the address of the asset that we want to borrow. Um, so what we need to do is we need to know what the address of the contract representing the asset is on the network that we're connecting to. So in this example, I'm going to borrow DAI, and therefore I'm going to need the contract address for DAI. And we'll take a look at getting that in a second. I just want to carry on with the, the tour and also mention what I'm going to change. So the first thing I want to change actually is here. I want to actually be able to pass in an amount. So I'm going to pass in uh, a uint uh, amount like that. And I'm going to just remove this hard-coded amount here and instead pass it through to here, to the flash loan command of the lending pool. Okay, so that's, that's one change that I want to make. Now, the second uh, change that I'm going to make is here in the migrations. And what I want to change here is I want to set the lending pool address uh, sorry, the lending pool addresses provider address, I want to be setting that when the network is open like that. Because when I deploy this contract, it deploys, uh, I'm going to be deploying it to Coven. So I want to set this address to this number, this address here, so that when we deploy the flash loan contract, that is passed through to the constructor as shown earlier. So. That they're the two changes that I want to make. Now, where does this number come from? Where does this address come from? This comes from the AVE documentation. So let's quick, take a quick look at that. So if we look at the AVE documentation, uh, we can see here that we've got, excuse me, here in the marketplace, this is the lender pool address provider. And this is the address here that I'm using in the deployment that I just showed you. So this is what gets passed in the constructor of our flash loan and that is used as our lending pool addresses provider. Now when we actually interact with the contract later on we will use DAI and this is the uh, address of the DAI contract that we need to use. So what we can do is we can migrate these contracts now because I'm finished. So I'll just do migrate. Set. And what we should see, of course, is the contract being migrated over to the Coven network. So there you can see it compiled. And now it's starting kicking off the migration here. And we can see that moving forward. Okay, cool. The contract has deployed. This is the contract address right here. And so if we clear this off, we now look at networks, we should see that we've got the contract deployed to the Coven network as expected. So what we can do now is go back to the 
instructions in the Apple box and take a look at how we can interact with this contract. So one thing you'll notice here on step seven is it says, if you have not added profitable logic to Flash Loan uh, Online 23, then you'll need to fund your contract with the design asset. So what, is, what do they mean by that? Well, let's take a look at that uh, line of code there that they're, they're talking about, which is basically this bit here. So um, this is a good opportunity for just to continue with, with the explanation of, of how this works. So what happens is the flash loan gets called. This is the, in, the, the method that we interact with. Uh, and we, we tell it what we want to borrow and how much. And then it calls flash loan on the lending call. And that then calls the execute operation met, uh, function here, which will perform the actual arbitrage. So the loan at this point has been um, added to the contract. And there is a require statement here to make sure that the balance is indeed uh, enough to perform the flash loan, that the flash loan has actually been successful. Um, and then we, you know, we do this logic here, and hopefully we've made a profit, right, in some arbitrage actions. Now, I'm not going to go into arbitrage right now, but what I want to do is just execute this and see what happens. But um, what they mean in that statement in the instructions is that you need to have enough to pay the fee. So you need to have some funds in the contract already to be able to pay the fee, and that's what they're, they're referring to. So how can, we, how can we do that? How can we add funds to this contract? And the way to do it, of course, is through faucets and through MetaMask. So if we take a look at my wallet, you'll see here that I've got a wallet set up already, and I've been running some tests with it, and I've got some Ether in the wallet already. So if you're just set it starting out, uh, you'll have a wallet maybe that doesn't have any ether in it, and you need to go to the um, faucet for your uh, for, for Co Coven here. So this is faucet Coven network. You log in with GitHub, and then you you paste in your address into here. So that would be your wallet address. So I would just copy and paste this here, and I put that here and paste that in like that, and that would be, um, and then I'd be able to send, send F to that. Now, I've already uh, used this faucet within the 24 hour period, so uh, but it would work for, for you guys. So once you've got ether in your wallet, how can you then get DAI into your wallet? And the answer is to use the Ave faucet here. So this is testnet.ave.com uh, forward slash faucet. And you go here and you click faucet and then you click submit. And this will send you some, uh, some die. Uh, now, the thing is, is that this is uh, not the real die, so you need to tell. Um, your wallet that this is a this is a special token and so what you need to do is you need to click add to token and click custom token and then pass in the address here of the of the die contract which happens to be this address right here now where, where did I get that address from since it's already been added but where did I get that from uh, that is from here so this is again under the documentation of, 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 of A. And you can see the die address is right here. So you just copy that into your crypto wallet and you will see the symbol appear and you can click next and there you you'll see the amount of die. So the faucet tends to at the moment give ten thousand die uh, into your wallet. So that's then uh, that's how you can load up your wallet with uh, Ether and DAI from the test nets. And then finally, you want to send DAI to your deployed contract. So I want to send DAI to this contract, the Flashland contract. And you know, maybe I want to send like 100 DAI 
and if I just click next and confirm and 100 DAI gets sent off to my contact. Now that we have loaded some money into our flash loan contract to support the payment of the fee, we can move to the next step, which is to actually perform the flash loan. And the way to do that is to basically grab an instance of the flash loan and call the flash loan method. Now, in our case, I've changed the method, so it's going to be slightly different. So let's go through the whole process now. So, firstly, what I want to do is get an instance of the flash loan like so. So, wait. So, and we can check that we've got back a truffle instance. Um, there's many ways of doing it, but this is one way I like to do it. It just lists all the methods that have been uh, passed along with this. Now, one method I want to check is the addresses provider. I want to make sure that that was set. If you recall in the migration, we should have set that to the lending pool addresses provider address. So it should be set to this, this address here. So let's check that out. So we can just do f dot addresses provider and see what that returns us. And it indeed is set as expected. So now what we can do is we can perform our flash loan. And what I want to do is, uh, for the flash loan, I want to borrow a thousand die, thousand die coin. So I'm going to set a value, local variable here called amount. I'm going to use the Web3 utils uh, two way, and I'm going to type in a thousand. Now, why do I use the two way helper? So two way just allows me to quickly get the amount in. Um, to the power of uh, 1 times 10 to the 18, so that we can quickly uh, convert the 1,000 die to uh, 1,000 uh, uh, to the power of uh, 18. The next thing that we want to do is to use um, or to set the asset. So I've got the asset address already here. And now we can use our flash loan method to perform the flash loan based on the asset that we want and the amount that we want to borrow. What this is going to do is basically it, it, uh, call the method and send a transaction to the flash loan function to perform the flash loan. And we get back a transaction and if we paste that transaction into Etherscan, uh, we can take a look at the transaction. You can see here that we borrowed a thousand die, and we then had to pay back one thousand and three point five die. So that must be the, the fee, uh, and that's it. We are we have just performed a flash loan. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial on flash loans. As always, we have a. Uh, GitHub repository here with uh, the instructions on how to perform it. It's basically the truffle box um, example that we just showed you. So um, the resources will be linked in the description below so you can pick up any resources and try out the flash loans for yourself. It's great that we can do this on the, on the test net and that we can get uh, some test coins for Ether, for DAI, and actually try out these flash loans and get comfortable with it before we actually delve into the real um, flash loans on the mainnet using real currency. So uh, um, what I'm going to do next is take a, a deeper dive into this and start looking at how we would actually perform some uh, transactions on decentralized exchanges and see if we can make a profit together. So until next time, I hope you enjoy this video and please subscribe, hit the like button and all the rest of it and hope to see you soon. Many thanks guys.